Welcome to the Waiting Warriors podcast. As loved ones of first responders and military personnel, we often face life situations and challenges that many others don't experience. And while each of us and our experiences are unique, together we can learn from one another and become stronger in this journey of life. Now let's step out of mediocrity. It's time to thrive. Hey, Waiting Warriors out there. Welcome to another week on the podcast. This week we have Morgan Reister. Morgan is a special education teacher for 10 years, which kudos any teacher. (laughs) And he's like, bless your heart. Um, But she's also a active duty wife. Um, Her husband has been in for four years. So welcome to the show, Morgan. Hi, thank you. So tell us, I I know you have quite the exciting journey. We're just going to, we're going to use exciting because it has right, been. We, it's been yeah. a little adventure. <laughs> your little, little adventure. So tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah. So I had been teaching probably five, six years. Yeah. About six years before I met my husband, I was uh, teaching middle school English and math, which I love my little middle school. They're these cute little lost puppies, and they don't know what's going on. They're so cute. Um, anyway, so we met when he was in A school, and we dated for probably like six months, and then got married because he was being transferred to another station, and so we moved over there, and so we've moved three times in the last three years. And yep, sounds about right. Yeah, yeah and two deployments. So here we are. Yeah. In. And how long were those deployments? Um, seven months. And then he got to come back early from this last one to go to school. So okay. that one was only like five months, four months, somewhere. Okay. I try so not to a, count. Yeah. That, yeah, that's not a bad, bad idea. <laughs> but still, that's a year out of four years. And that's just the deployment plus all the schools and the trainings. And yeah, you've had a lot of time apart. Yes, definitely. So how how have you dealt with that? Because that that's not easy, especially coming from like, did you have a mil- any military experience where you kind of understood what the life my, was going to hand you? My brother's a ranger, and he tried to explain like, hey, this is going <laughs> to be difficult, and I was like, no, I'm fine, because at the time he was going to be a linguist, and so he was just going to do analyst work. And it was going to be fine. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's not going anywhere. And like, I remember just yeah. like sitting there going, no, it's going to be fine. He's not doing anything. And then, <laughs> That's, like, he That up- is like a classic famous last words for a military spouse. He'll be fine. Or I'm going to be fine. He's not going anywhere. You, you asked for it. You asked for it. <laughs> I did. I totally did. And so... Yeah, and so that was really hard for me to, like, switch that mindset, and it took me a while to, like, be okay with that, but he ended up really liking the job he has now. He loves, like, driving the boat, and so just watching that joy kind of has helped me. Um, okay. But, yeah, the the distance we've really – he does really good at making sure that he gets to get on the computer and either email me or Facebook message me. Uh, like once a day um this last mm-hmm. deployment because he was in the office he got to message me multiple times a day which is great um so yeah. just like i was really grateful that he's made that commitment to be like no i am going to do this the first deployment mm-hmm. was a little bit harder because he wasn't in the office so he didn't have as easy access to the computer but he right. still made that effort so that made like the reintegration a lot easier for us because it wasn't like some stranger coming home Mm-hmm. It's somebody you had been talking to. But yeah. did did the communication while you guys have been apart, did you see, like, what have you seen with your ability to communicate or just, oh, yeah, that's like, like just your ability to communicate? so much because, like, it would go from, oh, I don't know when he's going to come. Like, when we were dating, I would be like, oh, mm-hmm. I don't want to be, like, that needy person, so I'm just going to let him do whatever he wants to go from that to him being like, hey, this is what's going on. And it's really interesting to watch when all you have is writing 
like all you have is those mm -hmm. emails you communicate so much different like you think about it more it's really mm. interesting we had been talking earlier about how it's important when he's not communicating to be like he's not doing it on purpose because at first I was kind of like why isn't he? like he could communicate he would have you know and so that was hard too it's like it's important to think the best of him mm, because that okay. would cause that causes fights too when you don't think the best in your person right when you're acting like a little bit petty but it it's super easy to feel that way it is right <laughs> <Totally>. like <laughs> like it that's a, that's a super interesting thing at least to me as a as a military spouse is like we know our men are amazing, right? Like that's why we married them. That's why we're with them. And yet we're put in these honestly ridiculous situations. And it's so easy to just like forget about that. Like just to be that pettiness creeps in. So how do how do you combat that? I have to make sure that I'm around people that aren't going to feed into it because there's so mm. many people that will. And yeah. so, like, there was just certain people that I knew I couldn't talk to when I was having a bad day, you know, that they would feed into that. You know, So just yeah. making sure that you're around people that are not going to encourage those kind of thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, and then kind of making sure that I was healthy, too, you know, like, making sure that I was working out and sleeping and all that. Because otherwise, I was in a bad mindset, too. Yeah. When you haven't slept in a couple days. And the water heater breaks or window, break, you know, like something. Yeah, will yeah, something. Yeah. And so it kind of is that you have to put your mask on first before you can take care of everything else. Right. Did you ever feel like it was, or have you ever felt that it's been hard to take care of yourself or to be happy because just because of his schedule or his flow and like trying to work around that? Yeah. I know, like, for a while, I had been like, well, I really want to move up in school. And, like, my dream had been to be director of student services, so, like, in charge of special education for a district. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, okay, well, we're moving, so how does that work? And so that definitely did kind of go into a spiral until I, like, found my people and found a way to work around that. Like, you can still have your dreams. It just mm -hmm. takes a little bit of yeah. Can you talk about that spiral? What did, what did that look like? Cause I know a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people use that term spiral and I, but we don't, we don't really like talk about it deeper. And I wonder if talking about it deeper, people would be like, okay, then I'm not the only one. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. how do we, For what was, me, what of, was your spiral? I kind of like stopped taking care of myself or like, I didn't want to go to the gym. I didn't like make full meals. I'd be like, okay, I'll have a grocery sandwich and that's it. I'll eat for a while or mm -hmm. like I won't go talk to people like go hang out with people because right now I work from home so it was really easy for me to isolate myself so now I have to be conscious about okay I do actually need to go talk to people and like even this last Sunday I really didn't want to go to church and I was like okay that's probably the time that I should if I'm having a hard time and so it ended up being really good just pushing yourself a little bit outside of those comfort zones to be like, okay, those times that you don't feel like you should take care of yourself is the time that you should. And yeah. Just being aware of that. That's a, that is a really good point. Cause it's, it's almost counterintuitive. I guess it's against our nature because our nature just wants to not. And like, that's our way of resting. I think mm -hmm. at least that's how I, that's how I explain it to myself. It's like, Oh, but I just need to rest. I don't feel like, reaching out to people or, you know, like putting that energy towards a relationship because I'm tired, but it's like, okay, I'm tired because I'm worn down. And the only way I'm not going to be worn down and not overwhelmed is by doing these good things for myself. It's so, it's so interesting to me, yeah. but for me, it just kind of fed itself. And so I have to be like, okay, yeah. recognizing those times when you're starting to do that. Mm-hmm. And that, does that take a lot of self-awareness? Like, do you have checks for yourself or is it, you know, like, you know, your trigger is if you're eating grilled cheese or, do you, or is it <laughs> that you're <laughs> you mean, like, or is a it little. that you're talking a certain way with your spouse or what is it for you? A little bit of both. 
a little Mm -hmm. bit of like being aware of yourself and a little bit of accountability of those people who are like, Hey, I didn't see you today. How are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's so interesting because like, how do you, sometimes I wonder if we know how deep we've spiraled, like until something snaps inside us. Yeah. It's just, it's just so interesting because especially with your experience, like so such a dramatic whirlwind, honestly, like in four <laughs> years, you're just, he's going to school, um, but then not, and then doing something completely different and you're working, but then like working towards goals and then changing that, like how, how easy is that for us to just slip and just it's all go crazy? Easy. Yeah. Um, earlier you were talking though about with your communication with your husband about how he, you were, you, you worst, you use the word committed. And I really like that, that he was committed to that. Have there, have there been times or like, have you guys had a conversation or something where you just decided like, this is what we're going to do. Yeah, and he, he knows that like my love language is quality time. And so that kind of fills that when he can't be here. Mm -hmm. And so like those Facebook messages make me feel like he's here a little bit more. And so Mm -hmm. he'll do stuff because he knows that's my love language. Yeah. What have you done to be, be committed to the team? He really likes care packages. So I send so many over there. Oh my goodness. The guys, it like filled the office. And the guys oh my were gosh. Like, what in the world? <laughs> but it made him feel really special, even though he's like, yeah. Honey, I don't have any place to put this on ship. And he like had to share stuff. Yeah. Everybody's benefiting from Morgan's love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good way. You'll become everybody's favorite. It's, that's the way to do it, I guess. Basically. It was really funny. I like it. So how did, how had you guys figured out that that was kind of what you guys liked? Had you just been open and talked about it or did you try different things and other things not work out? Uh, Someone had recommended reading the five love languages book Mm -hmm. and there's actually a military version and they had some ideas in there. And so I was reading that and I was like, Hey honey, what about this? So that's kind of how it started. Mm-hmm. And then the conversation just kind of went from there. Of like, we don't want to get to the end of this sea time and not know each other. Yeah. What, what, like that was one of our big fears. Yeah. What have you done to, has it just been those emails or have you, I guess, how have you communicated to keep that connection? And so you knew each other because I know a lot of people can quote unquote communicate but still not stay connected. Yeah, we had this book. I think it's called the, like, 50 Fridays Marriage Questions. And so it was just, like, a couple paragraphs and then a pretty deep question Mm -hmm. that you were supposed to answer. So we went through that book together. And that was pretty cool because we didn't want the emails to just be like, hey, this is what I was going, like, what happened. Mm -hmm. We wanted it a little bit deeper. So we finished that one. I'm not sure what book we'll do next, but that was pretty cool to have something to kind of guide the conversation. Yeah. About like, hey, what do you think they, what do you think about what they wrote? Right. So you're just, you. it sounds like you guys had some serious intellectual connections. That's awesome. We tried. Yeah. Was it, were the prompts or questions like, you know, were it just about like, philosophy type stuff or his past experiences or do you know what I mean? Like a little bit of everything. That's really cool. Um, Like how do you think one of them was like, how do you think your marriage impacts other people? Hmm. That one was kind of interesting to think about. Yeah. So yeah, it was pretty cool. Just like think more about dreams and hopes and what's going to happen afterwards instead of just like, well, the window broke. <laughs> you know, like, whatever happened. Yeah. Well, it's, it's super easy. It's like, one, there's the, just the crap that happens, right? That inevitably will happen while they're gone. But then also it's like, there gets to a point 
where it's just like, well, the same thing today happened that happened yeah. yesterday. And... Yeah. A couple of them were like animals. So here, one of them says, in the midst of conflict, what animal are you most like? <laughs> That's... And so like you had to describe yourself as the animal in the conflict. Yeah. And it was like stuff like that that was pretty interesting. Yeah. But super random. It keeps it light. It, but yeah. Also, especially since your your marriage is relatively new, it was that had to have been really good to just build up and continue to get to know each other. Because yeah. wasn't your your courtship was pretty fast too, right? Yeah, we started dating in July and we're married in February. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> we so, we were. Yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, we were fast like that too. He wasn't enlisted yet but when you know you know right and as long as you keep on working on it it works basically it works okay so last question though what's your key to thriving you have you have all this craziness going on how do, how do you thrive yeah. through it instead of just survive i had to come back to like who i was and what would like build me up mm -hmm. so I couldn't just sit and veg and I couldn't just lose myself and go okay I'm not gonna have dreams anymore so for me I had to like go take the classes towards my master's because I still wanted to do school leadership mm -hmm. so I kind of had to put myself in positions to like still have my dreams and still not just only be a Navy spouse yeah what do you mean by that by put yourself in positions to still have your dreams like doing the classes that I want or being around the people. Like I love the school that I have now. Mm -hmm. And so I can see myself uh, moving up in leadership with there, but I can also move with that career because it's an online school. Yeah. So just like finding those creative ways to still have what you yeah. want. Was that hard for you to kind of, because you mentioned it being a creative way, which makes me think that it hasn't looked like you thought it was going to look like, right? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I did not want to do online school. I was just like, no, I like being with the kids. Mm -hmm. Like, I want that connection. But I found great teachers where I am, you know, and it's taken a couple jobs. I've moved schools a couple times since we moved over here. So you just, it takes a bit sometimes to find mm -hmm. it, and that's okay. How did you keep yourself going you know like I I I I found myself where I'm at the point where it's like sometimes it's like it didn't there's a wall and I'm just like oh that means I can't do it and I'm just gonna give up and there goes my dreams oh, that totally happens that totally happens my husband kind of had to be like no you can't do that anymore <laughs> Because he was like, look at all the dreams that you had before. He's like, what in the world happened? And so he kind of had to give me a reality check mm -hmm. and be like, um, you're not like, not that I wasn't the person that he married, but he's like, where's that joy? Where's that spark? Oh, I love that. Cause I like, know it was such a sad conversation, <laughs> but I, but I love that thought. Cause like, I don't want to say we have to wait for our spouses because I know some people don't have that spouse that will have that conversation for one reason or another. But I love that thought of they fell in love with us for a reason. And a big part of that was our love of life and what whatever it was that we, whatever love it is that we have for life. You know what I mean? Like it's our drive and our dreams. And yet, we we turn into martyrs and are like, well, I'm doing all this and giving this all up for you. But that's that it, it's so, so like ironic almost that we think that because here your spouse is your loving husband is telling you like, no, I, I want you to be the person I married. I don't want you to be a martyr. And yet we we yeah. think that we're loving them that way. I really like that. No, then you end up being like resentful. Yeah, on both sides, like they're mad because you're mad. Yeah, <laughs> and so it, just... and that doesn't work. Yeah, very well. that doesn't help anybody. I love that. So, so I guess not 
stay true to yourself, but just still give yourself the space to be you. Yeah. And however that looks. Yeah. Because it'll look different for everyone. I just happen to be able to do it online. Right. But there's different things. Mm -hmm. And I also think it's interesting that your, your key to thriving is not an easy thing to do. Like getting your master's is not easy and yet it helps you have, like it helps you be happy. Isn't that interesting? Like (laughs) you think. It also helped pass the time. Yeah. Like not just sitting there. Waiting. (laughs) Yeah. It's, well, that's why. I, some people think like, oh, the waiting warriors, because we just sit around and wait. It's like, no, no, no. We are warriors. We are fighting while they're gone. Like, it is it is a super active thing, in my opinion. To, our, our waiting is super active. Yeah. Yeah. That was the other thing is I'll always send uh, my husband pictures of, like, what I'm mm-hmm. doing. So, like, if I – I do a lot of events with the students. Okay. And so I, like, travel a lot all over Florida like different places with the kids and so i'll like send him pictures and he's like yeah see that's what i want to see it's <laughs> like i don't want to see you like all upset <laughs> so like, it encourages them when you're finding your spot yeah yeah i like that a lot any any last parting words of advice it's just been fun like enjoy, enjoy. it like don't yeah enjoy it and find people who the the group that I had hung out with, there were a bunch of negative people. And so I ha- had to like leave that group. Mm-hmm. So find those people that aren't going to let you stay in that mindset because it's so easy to get into that negative mindset. It really is so easy. Yeah. So if you have those people that are encouraging that, then you're not going to thrive very well. Mm-hmm. Is it, was that super hard? Sorry, I like keep on saying last things and then I ask another question. Like, was that super hard because like you're a military spouse, you're not by family, you are feeling super alone, especially if your spouse is gone. And then you realize that the people you're with aren't benefiting you. Is that super hard though to leave when? It was a little bit of like, those are the people who are supposed to be there Yeah. For you. And then they weren't, and I was like, oh, okay. So I ended up, like, joining a gym so that I could go to the classes. Mm, okay. Because I was trying to think of, like, who has this positive mindset? Well, people working out, they're usually <laughs> pretty happy. It's true. <laughs> What's that quote from, like, and, Legally Bond? And working out gives you endorphins, and endorphins makes you happy. And happy people just don't kill their husbands. <laughs> right? Happy <laughs> People who work out are happy and they get endorphins and military spouses who work out and have endorphins just don't think negatively about everything. Right. Is that the mentality we're going yeah. <laughs> Bas- <laughs> Basically. So it's been really fun. It's like this kickboxing class, oh. but like there's tons of accountability yeah. in there. And so I just like three times a week, I just get to go like punch the bag <laughs> and it's really fun. Yeah. I like that. That's yeah. I like that. Okay. So. What have we learned? I'm like trying to do a small recap. So we've learned that life will just be crazy, but we enjoy it. Um, Communicate and be committed to your team, which I really like. Um, Don't be a martyr and stay, stay true to yourself and still, still be yourself and get creative. Yeah. On how to, how to do that. Yeah. Is that a, a good summary? I like it. Sounds I good. like it. Well, thanks, Morgan, so much for coming on the show. It's, again, I, I just yeah. like hearing everybody's stories. And we have seasoned spouse, brand new spouses in the middle. And thank you so much for sharing your your story and just being willing to be honest and give us those little little tidbits of goodness. Yeah. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you. Excited. It's fun to talk. <laughs> Thanks. You too. All you waiting warriors out there, do do something this week that I think a good thing from from what they said is like sit down and talk about what what you need and what your spouse needs and then be willing to give it to each other. Yeah? Is that a, I think that's a good to do. It's a good to do for this week. It's a great it's to a do. Gr- we're gonna do that to do. Do that and then 
um, reach out and let me know how that goes. And everybody, you just have a really good week. See ya. Today's podcast is sponsored by Countdowns and Cupcakes. Do you want your next care package to be the easiest one ever? Then leave the decorating to Countdowns and Cupcakes and their pre-decorated flap sets. They are perfect for every and any occasion. Shop at countdownsandcupcakes.com.